Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what if dad isn't on the birth certificate. Now, <laughs> I will start this whole thing by saying I am not an attorney. This is a very complicated issue. Um, you need to, you know, talk to somebody in your state to make you make sure you understand everything. But I'm going to try to give you the benefit of some of the cases that I've seen and some of the issues that come up and how we see those handled within the court system sometimes. So hopefully to give you a little insight, help you a little bit. But again, I'm just going to say this is a complex issue. I am not an attorney. And so it's always good to consult with somebody local to your jurisdiction. But before I dive into the topic, let me just uh, ask you to hit like on this content if you like it, and also to subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. And as always, please share on social media. So many people looking for help on all this kind of stuff, and uh, we need to reach the masses, and I can only do that with your help. If dad is not on the birth certificate, you know, this comes up with unmarried parents, right? Of course. And usually if you're married, the other person's on the birth certificate. In unmarried parents, sometimes dad's on there, sometimes they're not. So what happens when you go into court is you usually have an option to file to establish paternity or you can just file on custody only. Now, I know in California specifically, there are those two, those two options. I think most jurisdictions have that option. And so you don't necessarily need to go through the um, establishment of paternity if you have a birth certificate with the person's name on it, okay? with, with It's usually dad, obviously, because mom's giving birth, right? And so I'm going to use that assumption in this that it's dad that we're talking about, whether he's on the birth certificate or whether he isn't. So if dad isn't, okay, then you have to establish paternity through the court system so that you can get a court order and then you can have the birth certificate modified and have a new one produced that has dad's name on it. So a lot of times you will file, uh, usually in those cases, you will file a some sort of paternity or some states call it parentage now be a little more politically correct, I suppose. Um, so they call it a parentage action or a paternity action. And so uh, you, you, if you don't need that, if dad is on the birth certificate, then usually you can just file a petition on custody and support and not have to go through the whole rigmarole of establishing paternity. Now, if you go to a child support agency, let's say you don't actually go file for any kind of custody because you know, dad isn't involved or whatever, and you just go to a child support agency, they will actually go through the steps of establishing the paternity if dad's not on the birth certificate so that they can then collect the support or whatever. And they'll usually reach out to the other parent, give them a chance to, you know, accept or deny um, paternity and all that kind of thing. A lot of times I've also seen dad be on the birth certificate. And then at some point, somebody figures out that dad on the birth certificate is not actually the biological dad, okay? Now, this can get a little bit sticky, as you can imagine, and it can be a little bit complicated, but most jurisdictions have a timeline under which that can be changed, okay? So let me give you an example to sort of... Um, help you understand what I'm talking about. We had a case here in California and in California, the timeline is two years. Okay. But uh, different jurisdictions have different timelines. I've seen places have three year, one year, whatever. So you're not in California. Your timeline could be different. Um, you need to go out and research that. But in California, it's a two year timeline. That timeline starts ticking from the point that the party that is wanting to change it knew that this child didn't belong to that parent. Okay. So if you knew and you didn't do anything about it and then the child's 10 and then you, and you knew when the child was two and now the child's 10 and now you want to change it, 
then you know you've passed you've passed the point where the court will allow you to do that if if you're in California usually okay so again very complicated issue this is not legal advice i'm just giving you an example of like what i have seen happen you have to you know if you believe that this is true and you don't want the long term responsibility then you've got to uh take some action when you figure out that there's a possibility that this child may not be yours or may not be dad's or whatever and start the process to go through you know having a dna test or whatever the other thing i think that parents are um misinformed about a lot of times is the support issue because a lot of times um, I have had dads say, well, I'll just sign over my parental rights and then I won't have to pay support. And that's actually not true. Um, you can sign over your parental rights and still be held responsible unless there is a third party kind of in the wings waiting to adopt the child, right? So the most common scenario is like mom has the child, she remarries. There's now a stepdad. Dad hasn't been involved with the child the whole time. Stepdad wants to adopt the child. You know, mom wants stepdad to adopt the child. Child wants stepdad to adopt the child, you know. And then um, they contact bio dad and say, hey, you know, will you sign over your rights? If you sign over your rights and then stepdad adopts, okay, then you're off the hook on the financial side because stepdad has now stepped into that role. Okay, and I've I've actually even seen cases where it's difficult for a parent to be able to relinquish their parental rights unless there is somebody there that's ready to step in and adopt the child. When the person on the birth certificate isn't actually, like let, let's go back and say that you just found out that you may not be, okay? Now, to me, this takes on a couple different problems. One is if you have an older child that's like eight, nine, 10, and that child always thought you were the father and, you know, you've always filled that role for them, then psychologically that may not be worth it because, you know, it, if you have a good relationship with the child, you love the child, you thought they were yours, child loves you, thought they you were their dad, you know, may not be worth sort of blowing that whole thing up um, just to determine if that is in fact, you know, your child or not. So, you know, you want to consider your relationships in this and not just the legalistic issues of who is and isn't on the birth certificate. But if you just found out that there's a possibility that you're not, and that makes a difference to you, um, you know, or maybe you haven't been in contact with this child very much and now mom's coming after you for support and you just found out there's a possibility that mom was with somebody else and this may not even be your child, okay, then you want to trigger, you know, a uh, something to get a DNA test. And that may involve going into court and having a paternity action so that you can get DNA testing if mom is, you know, refusing that. So there's a lot of moving parts here, but if you're not on the birth certificate, you essentially don't have legal rights, right? The, the legal custody issues are belong to the to the parents and those parents have to be listed on the birth certificate. So if you're dad and you're not listed on the birth certificate, in theory, mom has all of the legal custody control. Now, that doesn't mean that mom hopefully doesn't give you some participation and, and do whatever to include you. But I find a lot of times if the person wasn't on the birth certificate, there's a reason that that mom did that and you probably don't have the greatest cooperation, right? <laughs> These kinds of issues you want to deal with as quickly as you can. You want to not wait if possible and not just bury your head in the sand and let time go by because the more time that goes by, the harder it becomes for everybody, the more difficult it is for the child. You know, a lot of times, you know, the, the records and going back and changing things and all of that become difficult because there are certain timelines like I said, in different states, it's different. So I think that's the main message I want to give you is like, if you're questioning whether you're on it or you're not, whether you're questioning if you should or shouldn't be, <laughs> if you're questioning that if I'm on it, I shouldn't be, or if I'm not on it, I should be, then don't wait. Okay. Take immediate action, contact somebody, find out what your timelines are, what your responsibilities are, what the potential pitfalls are, 
and at least make an informed decision. I see a lot of dads in particular kind of bury their head around this issue and not deal with it. And, you know, no decision is still a decision. It's usually not a good decision in this case. So make sure you're proactive and find out, you know, what you need to do to remedy the situation. If you'd like to learn more about my coaching services, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There is a link on that page where you can book a time to speak to one of my staff and learn about my services and how I might be able to support you on this journey. See you guys next time. 